this video I'm going to show you how to install DB Visit Standby version 9. We assume that you have covered the prerequisites that is required prior to attempting the installation. Things like the base directory, the network connectivity and the relevant ports should be looked at prior to installing DB Visit version 9. As you can see I've downloaded the zip file already in a little directory which I call my installation directory and then from there we will do the necessary. So first of all we are going to unzip the zip file. It will produce a tar file which we will then extract. As you can see from that extraction we now have a DB visit directory and within that DB visit directory we've got an installer directory and from here we are going to run the installer. Just for information I am on my primary host, which is dbvlab01. Okay, so it is now asking me to confirm the dbvisit base directory. And this is where we recommend you install your standby dbvisit standby software. If you want to put it somewhere else, for example, under U01 or where you have uh, enough space, please do so. Just make note of that. As indicated, there's my installer directory, and this is going to be my base where I work from going forward. So I'm happy with that. All right, so it picks up that I've got that already created. It tells me the installer version and I've got nothing installed yet. So we are going to choose number one, which is installing components. And then I'm going to say one again, because we want to install the core components. It verifies my DB visit base, which is USR DB visit. And I hit enter. For dbvnet, it is now going to ask me a couple of questions. The first one of which, what is this local host name? And this is dbvlab01, so I'm happy with that. The port name for dbvnet on the server 7890, part of the prerequisites I sorted. Then the remote host, in this case, will be the standby host. So I need to change this and say dbvlab03 is my standby host. The port that was opened on that server for dbvnet is 7890, again part of the prerequisites, I enter. Then we provide a little passphrase to establish secure connections and it gives me a summary of the dbvnet configuration. And I hit enter to continue. Now we're going to do the same for dbvagent. So dbvagent, we're only going to configure on this server, on the primary server with this installation. So dbvlab01, enter. The port for dbv agent 7891, also part of the prerequisites. And then it asks me for the passphrase and I'm using the same passphrase throughout. And there it gives you the summary for dbv agent. And with this it now provides us with information of the installation. It has installed the core, which is dbvctl. It has installed dbvnet, dbvagent, and there you can see a summary. And as you can see, we don't have dbv server installed yet because our recommendation is to install dbv server on the standby host, or if you are um, lucky to have a VM, whether it's Windows or Linux somewhere 
you can install DBV server or the central console there. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to show you the same on the standby server. So we're going to unzip, then we're going to extract our file. We're going to say tar minus xvs. Oops, I need to say tar. This is going to create that dbvisit directory, remember? So we're going to cd to that. Let's just clear here. Then we're going to installer and we are going to invoke the installer from here. Exactly the same. My base usrdb visit, so I can, can confirm that. Then it also tells me the installer version. I've got nothing installed yet, so we say one. We say one again because we want the core components. It confirms the base, yes. And this server is called DBV Lab 03. So this is the local. Yes, I'm happy. Yes, that's my DBV net port. Now my remote host from this side. So going back, we want to be able to talk to primary. And then again, 7890 and our pass phrase. There you can see the summary. I'm happy with that. Continue. Now, as I indicated previously, now we're going to configure DBV agent on this relevant host only. We've already done it on DBV Lab 01. So we're happy with this. 7891 is the port for DBV agent, and I'm using the same passphrase. Enter, and it's going to show me. That it has installed again the core dbv net dbv agent now we want to run the console of the standby server so we're going to choose one and then we're going to choose as you can see there five so yeah it's going to say give the host name to be used for dbv server and we want it to be dbv lab 03 my standby server that's great prerequisites again the port for dbv server the console is 4433 and to confirm that we are making use of this local listener address we say dbv lab 03 again we happy and it installs dbv server for us so now you can see that all the components have been installed on the standby side the next step is to ensure that we start these processes so on each of the hosts we will now go to our base and we will start each of the components. And you can start them in any order. No need to have certain ones before other ones, etc. So it is fine. So on the primary, we only have DBB agent and DBB net. I have started them with the component minus D start. And just to check that it is running there you have that and the same for components and then we've got one extra one here and that's dbb server and we will start that as it will handle the central console so let's And there we have installed DB Visit Standby version 9 and we have started the processes. Thank you.